In the last video, we derived the heart of electromagnetic induction, Faraday's law. Faraday's law states that the EMF induced by a change of magnetic flux is proportional to the rate of that change, and the proportionality constant is minus 1. Yep, that minus sign is Lenz's law. Let's unpack what that actually means physically. Come on, follow me. This is part 2 of understanding electromagnetic induction. Make sure you watch part 1 first to make the most of what's to come. The link is in the description. If you are not familiar with notions like electric potentials, magnetic fields or the concept of flux, you might want to watch these videos also. In part 1, we looked at a simple setup. A metallic bar sliding on rails with no mechanical friction. The two rails are connected by resistor R and the entire loop is sitting in a uniform magnetic field pointing into the page. Let's stick with that setup. Inside the loop, the magnetic flux phi is the product of the loop's area and the magnetic flux density B. Since the bar is sliding to the right, the area increases with time, therefore so does the magnetic flux. We saw in part 1 that the motion of the bar generates an EMF pointing upwards, and that is because the bar is moving to the right and the magnetic field is going into the page. And since the circuit is closed, that EMF drives a current around the loop. In our case, the current flows counterclockwise. Now, you probably remember, a current in a Y creates its own magnetic field. Use the corkscrew right hand rule, and you'll see that this current induces inside the loop a new field B prime that points out of the page, opposite to the applied field B. There is now an induced magnetic flux phi prime that opposes the increase of flux phi caused by the bar's motion. Okay, pause here. Let's recap. The motion of the bar in a magnetic field B induces an EMF epsilon. That creates a current I, that in turn generates a magnetic flux phi prime that opposes the increase of the flux phi due to the motion of the bar. Do you see what this is? It is a negative feedback loop, and it is caused by the direction of the induced EMF expressed by the negative sign in Faraday's law. That is what Lenz's law is all about. In a poetic sense, it's like if nature was always trying to keep the total flux constant. But there's a reason for that and it's all about conservation of energy. Let's look at our setup from an energy perspective. There is a current flowing through the resistor R, which means that energy is being dissipated as heat. In other words, energy is leaving the system. The power dissipated by the resistor is a product of the resistance by the square of the current passing through it. By using Ohm's law, we can rewrite this dissipated power as a product of the potential drop across a resistor V by the current passing through it, I. Since R is the only resistor, the voltage V across it has the same magnitude as the EMF epsilon. This gives us the rate at which energy leaves the circuit, the product of epsilon and I. But where does this energy come from? What do you think? Yes. It comes from the kinetic energy of the bar. Whenever a current flows in a wire placed in a magnetic field, the wire experiences a magnetic force known as the Laplace force. The magnitude of this force is the product ILB, where I is the current and L the length of the bar within a magnetic field of strength B. Use the right hand rule and you find that, in our case, the Laplace force on the bar points to the left, opposing the bar's motion. This Laplace force acts like a brake, like a kind of electric friction, you know? Remember that the induced EMF is equal to BRV, where V is the velocity of the bar. So to keep the EMF constant, the velocity of the bar needs to stay constant too. In other words, the bar needs to be pushed by an external force that cancels the Laplace force. The supplied force should therefore also have a magnitude equal to ILB. 
This is the key point where Lenz's law comes in. As we have seen, Lenz's law points out the direction of the induced current, and that is what defines the direction of the magnetic force opposing the motion. The system is resisting change, hence the electric friction. To overcome that friction, work needs to be done by an external force. Energy is being supplied to the system to keep the bar moving. Let's check if that energy input matches the energy output that we calculated earlier. The work provided by the applied force over displacement dx is… We can now write the rate at which the work is done on the circuit, that is, the power delivered to the circuit… Substituting the applied force by its expression ILB, we get… And here, you recognize velocity. The induced EMF epsilon has a magnitude equal to BVL. So that gives us a new expression for the power delivered, the product of epsilon and I. This is the same expression as for the power dissipated. So here we go. Perfect match. The power delivered to the circuit is equal to the power dissipated by the circuit. The mechanical work done on the bar to maintain a constant velocity is entirely converted to electrical energy that is then dissipated as heat by the resistor. And that is because of Lenz's law that imposes the direction of the induced EMF as opposing what generates it in the first place. Viva electrical friction! It gave us modern technology! After watching these two videos, I hope that you now have a good understanding of these pillars of electromagnetic induction that are Faraday's law and Lenz's law. These two videos packed in a lot, right? So do not hesitate to watch them again if you need to. Yes, understanding the basics is a great investment. Electromagnetic induction can become abstract fast. Yet, once you get a solid understanding of the fundamentals, everything becomes a lot more manageable. Et voilà! If you enjoyed the video or found it useful, like, subscribe and smash this notification bell. It really encourages me in producing new videos. In the meantime, take good care of yourself, and I'll see you soon for the next episode of Physics Made Easy. Ciao!